You need to take your kids on a multi-day wilderness trip if you want them to have the kind of childhood that sets them up to be confident, resilient, independent adults. I've believed this for years. I had even taken my kids, now ages two and six, on several multi-day wilderness rafting trips when they were just babies. Yet I still let fear and doubt keep me from going on one of the best wilderness trips I can even imagine. It was a multi-day river trip on the wild and scenic Rogue River in Southern Oregon. And we just kept putting it off. We all want to give our kids the kind of childhood that sets them up for success as adults. But for most of us, it's really hard to plan and execute a multi-day wilderness trip, especially when we have young kids in the house. But this is actually the best way, a shortcut in fact, to giving our kids exactly what they need to thrive. In this video, I'm gonna tell you about how we did end up going on that Rogue River trip and the four things that I learned about why wilderness is essential for childhood development. Hi, I'm just chilling. Stick around for number four because that one actually benefits you just as much as your kids. I'm Susan Elliott and on this channel we help regular busy people get out and do their dream family adventures together. Why we started doing multi-day rafting trips specifically with our daughter when she was as young as six months old, we pretty quickly started to build in limiting beliefs around what we could or should do with our kids in the backcountry. The first thing our rogue trip taught me to do and even just starting in the planning of it was to question all of these limiting beliefs that are keeping us from executing on the plan to get these big trips just together and organized and off the ground. These are limiting beliefs around why you can't, but especially why you shouldn't be taking your kids in the backcountry. Ooh, that word should. See, we took her on her first multi-day river trip when she was just six months old on the Grand Ronde River here in Oregon. It all went really well, despite not much sleep, of course, that was pretty standard in those days. But but we did hit a small rapid and I remember looking back at my husband who was rowing while I was naturally holding the baby in the front of the raft and thinking, we kind of exchanged a look saying, oh, that was a little bit bigger than we expected. Now that didn't really sink in until later on when we were putting her through some other rapids and she was getting splashed and she developed this association that she hated white water. Now coupled that with like many years later when she was four riding on a friend's raft and then just taking right into this big wave and getting slammed in the face with a wall of wet, cold water as water tends to be, and her just basically flat out saying that she didn't like white water, didn't like rapids. So we assumed that all class three white water was basically off the table. We all want to protect our kids, but it turns out that the belief that our daughter didn't like rapids was not the correct belief to have. She actually just didn't like getting cold and wet. And even when she isn't really interested in the thrill of the rapid, she doesn't complain as long as I'm holding her safely in the front or just the back of the raft. and avoiding getting wet and cold. When we questioned this belief and sort of retested it, the Rogue River went from being sort of a one day future trip once the white water thing was solved for to us asking, wait a minute, is one day now? And thankfully we questioned this because our kids actually love the rapids. They love the white water when it's a nice hot day and it's fun getting wet and cold, much like most adults actually. That's the thing about many adventures is that you have to say yes first. Then once you go, you sort of figure out why you should have said yes all along. No, I didn't mean to get splashed. Yeah. The second thing I learned is that when we use the right language with our kids in wilderness settings specifically, we can build little resilient, confident risk takers. So we knew the rapids would be a challenge. Turns out 110 degree heat was in the forecast for our entire trip. Oh, and it's kind of right in the middle of wildfire season here in the Northwest. So we could have just like smoky and gross air the whole time. Any wilderness trip is gonna give you ample opportunity to find challenges, meet them and work through them. Sure we can get these challenges sort of in the front country in everyday life, but research strongly supports that being in wilderness setting offers substantial benefits for problem solving, facing challenges, and enhancing your overall mental health. Studies in the Journal of Positive Psychology have shown that wilderness can improve self-awareness, emotional regulation, and the ability to handle adversity back in your normal everyday life. I'm so tired. 
So, if wilderness is a way for me to give my kids these skills all at once, sign me up. To help give our kids this, we model the language that we use when we talk about these experiences. I'm not just talking about the technical, sort of jargony river rafting language, although it is really super cute to have a two-year-old point out pour over rocks and eddies as you're floating downstream. We also use the language of confidence, of problem solving, of resiliency, as we adults are facing the same challenges while we're out there. When we watched Adam row through the only class four rapid out there called Blossom Bar from high up on the shore, I I caught my daughter starting to use the sort of negative language as he entered the rapid. And I decided to quickly turn that around into using some of the positive language that highlighted the ways that he is facing this challenge in front of him with confidence, with resiliency. Daddy, please don't get on the pour over rock. He's doing it. It looks great. Look at him catching that eddy behind the rock. He knows to sneak in there. Go, Daddy, go. Go, Daddy, go. So smooth. What a smooth ride. The language of resiliency and problem solving that our kids are exposed to more in the wilderness is like giving them a mental toolbox that they can use for the rest of their lives. The third element that wilderness trips offer is deep social connections and bonds with the people that are out there. Both family bonding time, but also their peers, also known as adventure buddies. We love going on river rafting trips for this reason because it's typically a lot easier if you have multiple families out there. So we tend to invite other families that have kids that our kids like, that they want to play with. But you can also do this when you're going backpacking or any other kind of wilderness setting activity. Invite other kids to go with your kids. His new book called Anxious Generation, Jonathan Haidt really emphasizes the point of free play activity as a way to get back to the roots of childhood and sort of counteract this terrible thing that's happened by giving our kids phones. One of his findings is that interacting with peers during play actually builds empathy in our kids. It builds cooperation. It builds the ability to be able to solve problems as a group, whether those are sort of like internal social problems or just a group problem that they're encountering as they move downstream, let's say. Kids have to learn how to understand different perspectives. They also have to see how other people are handling the challenges and learn from that as you go. And it's really important that they get to do this with peers, not just adults. Adventure buddy relationships forge friendships away away from the digital world. And in a risk-taking environment where play opportunities are everywhere. We even let the kids decide how to spend their own time once we hit camp or even sometimes while we're out on the river. Like on the rogue trip when our kids decided to build a massive sand dam equipped with like parents hauling water up as the pumping system naturally. But they wanted to do this over and over again. They troubleshooted patching up the dam when it broke every time and they had a blast for hours and hours and hours with each other doing this. Or they turn our pack raft into like a little playground in the eddy at camp. Or they use it in a side creek to descend some mini rapids and figure out how to maneuver their own craft on their own or rather just sort of float down without getting bumped out. It's pretty phenomenal when we let our kids play and when we give them friends to be able to do it with. And the wilderness setting is a perfect place for this. Okay, point number four, and this one is the biggest. Something I knew, but I need to be reminded of every time I go on one of these trips is that kids see us play too. When we're all separated from our screens, meaning you can't go hide in a corner and do a little bit of scrolling or a little bit of research, we all get the benefits of play. And it's really important that our kids see us engaging in play. This sets that standard that the best experiences are actually away from screens, away from the digital world. Here's a perfect example. We took a mini mission up Tate Creek when we were on the Rogue River up to supposed waterfall that we could slide down, a water slide waterfall. Rad, right? I mean, we had to hike up this creek bed, crawling up and over and under and logs and boulders and jumping. And it was kind of an, a little mini mission to get up there, only to see that when we got up there, it wasn't exactly enticing for little kids to go down. It was more of a big kid water slide. So the kids had essentially struggled up the hike without the pot of gold at the end of it, without this water slide that we had been enticing them to. But it gave an opportunity for them to see the Adults play. It's so fun, let's go! <laughs> <laughs> you gotta do it for
<laughs> and I have to note here that I didn't initially want to go down this water slide. It kind of looked super sketchy at first. You kind of bang your way down and then rapidly kind of are injected into this pool. But I get a little bit more brave when my kids are watching, so I decided to try it. And we all had a blast. But our kids got to witness that. They got to witness us just having fun, just playing, even overcoming a little bit of fear or a little bit of challenge in order to make that happen. And I was super impressed because my daughter decided to climb up the sketchy ladder next to the slide just to see the view from the top. So you never know what your kids are going to do when they see you play. Taking risks during play allows children to see examples of failure and success in a controlled environment. But being in the wilderness helps kids feel like there's a little bit less control going on. This naturally just leads to building confidence and being able to resolve challenges on their own down the road. It also helps us adults build the same kind of resiliency and confidence in our own ability to do hard things. Turns out we need more play too. So take your kids into the wilderness for multiple days at a time. You're gonna find them shed these layers and be able to just sink into the environment and sort of immerse in all these really important skills that they need to develop during childhood and that you need as well. Be sure to include your experience in the comments below if you have any questions about it or how to get started. Put those in there too. Maybe I'll be able to create a future video about that. Don't forget to like and subscribe while you're down there and I'll see you next time.